thank me for my metabolic charts, and I'm really glad that you find them helpful. But really, it's also kind of selfish for me because I find that making them is actually one of the best things that helps me learn and really integrate all of the different pathways. So I highly encourage all of you to do some sort of charting when you're trying to learn metabolism. You don't have to use Adobe Illustrator and do some fancy dancy graphics. Adobe Illustrator is expensive. There's a free alternative called Inkscape. Um, it has a bit of a learning curve though. So you can also use this tool called draw.io. Freely accessible, it can connect to your Google Drive and all sorts of other drives so you can have it in the cloud and it lets you make some nice mind maps and various charts. It's got arrows and boxes and stuff. You can also, of course, just write things out on paper, but I find it helpful to have a digital version, um, to do it like in a digital version because one of the th nice things about either doing it in like draw.io or doing it in Illustrator or Inkscape is basically you're going to find when it comes to metabolism that you keep having to move things apart to add more and more arrows and more and more different side branches. And so if you have it written in pencil or even um, I mean, pen or pencil or whatever, you're going to find yourself having to like erase or maybe if you put it on like post-it notes, so you can move things around. But by connecting these pathways and kind of like looking and seeing, okay, what goes where and what could go where and well, how does this pathway integrate with this pathway and where else can you go with that? And then incorporate like your um, uh, regulation. So initially you just put the pathways and then you learn about new pathways and you add those and then you learn about their regulation and you can add those, your allosteric modulators, your covalent modulators, your modifications and things like your hormones, how do those influence things? So super duper helpful. I'm happy that my graphs are helping people like as a resource and kind of like when I was trying to learn it all, I'm like, I wish I just had like a central place where I could see it all connected. But that being said, I don't want that to discourage you from making your own um, graphs and charts. So I'm planning to make some versions that are kind of like partly filled out for my students that they can um, like fill in the pieces as they go through the lessons. So I'm working on one for like glycogen metabolism and I'm thinking I'm gonna like leave out the hormones and some of the enzymes and have them fill it in while they watch the pre-class video. So good things like that because really chart things out, make bar graphs, make charts, make whatever. You see those tables, maybe you can make a stacked bar chart showing where the different glucose ends up. Maybe you wanna show a graph showing things over time. A lot of really cool metabolic data is out there, but it's in these tables. And if you just plot them out on a simple plot, it can make things easier. So integrate those topics, make things make sense in your head. It, getting a really deep understanding of metabolism really does take time and it takes a lot of thinking through things and thinking about the same thing over and over and rereading portions of a text and just sitting and thinking about figures, maybe paste figures up on the walls, maybe so when you come out of the shower, you're like, oh, there. Because one of the great things about having a resource like a chart or um, something like this is that even if right now the concepts of how those enzymes work and how they're regulated doesn't quite make sense, it hasn't quite clicked, if you then have an aha moment later, you can go back and look, oh yeah, that enzyme does that. And that can go there and that can go there. And instead of having to rummage through all the different notes from all the different sections, you can kind of see, I've got the central location. Yeah, here's how it all interconnects. And now let's get into really fun stuff, like thinking about how might it be affected in various diseases? How might we be able to treat those diseases? How can we maybe look at how things are different in different animals, different species? So much cool stuff that you can do but you've got to put in the time and really invest some, some deep thought and don't feel bad that it takes you a while. Find what works to help you learn and go for it.